Um, I'm Susie Daggett. I'm one of the co-co-co's of this group, Nevada County Online. Um, how many people are new to the group? Meaning Quite a first few. Time. First time. And how did you hear about it? You just shout out. Machen. 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 Facebook. Facebook. And Robert Trent. And Robert Trent. And, and Corey Young. And Igniter Course. Igniter Court. Okay, great. Great. A bunch of them. That's perfectly <laughs> short. I'll sit up. You haven't been here for more than one time. Okay, so there's Corian. He got his name tag, so now we know who he is. So um, we do this every um, fourth Tuesday of the month, and the idea is to for all of us to gain information about how to run our businesses online. And it's quite a trick because the rules keep changing all the time. So, um, in fact, something changed this morning. Would yeah. you like to talk about what changed yeah. like 20 minutes ago? Um, our speaker is unable to make it today. So this is the first time I've had this happen. Um, she was coming in from the Bay Area, and uh, she originally, there was question whether she could make it because she had jury, uh, jury duty. duty. So I've been working on trying to figure out whether that was happening or not. And then the latest thing is that she called me this morning and said her car wouldn't start and that AAA was on the way. And she was coming in from the Bay Area and she gave me about 40 minutes notice before the meeting, so I think she might have had a supersonic jet instead of a car to make here in time. Anyway, but um, we've got a couple of options for today. And uh, we'll go through our announcements and things, but let me propose what we can do. Um, I have a presentation that I teach for Plaster School for Adults on LinkedIn. LinkedIn was one of the topics that was on the survey, and we had some interest for people learning more about that. For me, that is branding. Personal branding is, if you have a focus on LinkedIn, it is something you can do to show your expertise and show your business as well. So that's one option. The other option uh, is having a discussion around branding. We have a lot of people in the audience that have experience with branding and how that ties into your business. I've taught on it in pieces. I just don't have a PowerPoint on it. So I wanted to perhaps open that up to the crowd, and I will have no personal stake if you guys would rather have a discussion of branding opposed to me teaching a topic. Yes. I'm thinking I'll, I'll put out as an option three, which would be a hybrid of that. Mm -hmm. Maybe do both. Have a presentation and then well, follow it up with. Well, aren't you smart? That's a perfect <laughs> <Okay>. idea. <laughs> now we've gotten even more complex. So I can shorten what I was going to do on LinkedIn to any amount of time and just go through it briefly, give some highlights to it. So uh, before we go to a straight up vote, how many people have interest in LinkedIn and think that's something that they would like to learn more about? Okay, good. Uh, so that's a possibility. So let's do it by straight votes. You're a straight no. facilitator. You got to do. I I think that we just will go with the flow because that's the best thing to do when mm -hmm. things go cattywampus. Is you just figure out what works in the moment. You start talking, and if you get long-winded. <laughs> I can be shouted <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah, that's this awesome. Is, this is an open lights. group. Oh. This is an open group. We encourage lots of communication between you and us. It's not us and you. It's all of us together. So jump in. And Doug, thank you for that um, that point. Because I think we're just going to have to punt when it's time to punch. You do the Hail Mary. Okay. So um, we already did the who's new sort of thing. And who has an exciting thing to say about their online business that that maybe happened because of something you did that was different than what you've done before. Who has a win-win? And this is success story, so it can either be a success story from your business, and Matt, I saw your hand go up, or if you have a question for the group, or you have something else that you want to share and related to networking, this is a good time for it. We like to lead and focus on people who can say, I did this and it worked, and here's how. Cool. Matt. So, my name is Matt Vanderpoel. Uh, I have a web app to facilitate online QA of websites targeted at web agencies and web app developers. And I recently relaunched my marketing site and tweeted about it yesterday afternoon. And it was picked up by somebody who follows me and he retweeted it to his 6,500 followers. And I had a sign up this morning from it. So, oh, yeah. I'm excited. Very good. Yeah, cool. A, a paying sign up, so sign up for a paying plan. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Congratulations. Someone else? I'll go. Yes. Good afternoon. Morning. 
Um, I'm Ruth Schwartz, and with a group of six or seven other people, this week is the launch of the Expert Content Distribution Program, which is designed for people who know they have to distribute a lot of content, but they hate having to do all of the technical work every week. So I'm very excited if you are on either side of that, either a technical person who wants to help experts distribute content, or you are an expert who hates doing the physical work of distributing it, just ask me for more information. Okay, I'll, I'll do a quick win. I have a, a new website called Seekers Central, and it's a way for people who are interested in mind, body, spirit, and inspiration to get guest blogs and uh, videos and that sort of thing. And I've been reaching out to a lot of different places. Polly's one of my bloggers on Paleo. Very interesting, very good work. But I've been reaching out to other magazines and places like me to see if I could cooperate with them and they would cooperate with me. And so now somebody's posting my blog, my personal blog, on their website and they have a much bigger presence than I like. Oh, I feel popular for <laughs> I'm Dixie, and um, I just started, um, I'm an artist, and I'm very awkward at doing this, but I just started a blog, <laughs> and um, the blog is for, um, it's to raise awareness of domestic violence, and um, it's going to be uh, in the newspaper on in Prospector uh, on Thursday. Good for you. Um, I'm, I'm doing a show uh, at Ben Franklin, and I'm trying to incorporate this into it with it. Um, it's called Diving Deep, um, and uh, it's for it. I'm I'm sharing my life story. Um, I came from being set up to be abused, and I'm writing about my life and sharing it, and so that people can see why they why they get set up, why they stay in it, and then how they can leave. And I've been out for five years now, and I'm thriving. Yeah. And, <laughs> I'm poor, but I'm happy. <laughs> but um, part of the proceeds from anything I make are going to go to all the shelters up here. So, thank you. thank you. Yes. Thank okay, you. this one's relatively easy. We've had three people stand up, and I don't think any one of the three have actually said what their website is, so people could visit oh, them. I did. Seeker okay, Center. sorry. So three out of four. So that'd be a good thing to do, Dixie. Thank you. Is okay, help everybody website. find your blog. I've got. Um, Just announce uh, no, it. Say Just it. announce say it. Say it out loud. It's um, diving deep one, att dot net. Okay. And then on, on here it says, stop the silence of bullying in any form, including domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And Ruth, what's yours? ExpertContentDistribution.com. Yeah. QATab.com. QATab, QA tab. very short, very simple, memorable. Thank you all. Okay, so where are we, Mr. Corey, on here? Let me talk oh. speakers a little. Okay. Seems apropos <laughs> for this meeting. Uh, as many of you know, the core part of this group is we bring in a speaker once a month to talk on a variety of internet marketing topics. So we've had search engine optimization, social media marketing, blogging, Facebook, email. There's a lot of topics out there. Uh, we'll have survey results that will be emailed out soon where we surveyed the members to find out the topics you're interested in. To bring it back to me, I am the speaking coordinator for the group, and I would definitely like to open it up to group members to help me out whenever possible. If you have a suggestion of somebody that you find as a quality expert, a speaker, somebody who can bring uh, their knowledge to the group, please let me know. Uh, we have speakers lined up for the next several months. Uh, next month, definitely encourage you guys to come back for David Pollaby, who is the owner of Tahoe Mountain Sports. It's an online retailer for sports equipment, gear, clothing, skis, all this other stuff. He is doing a case study on how he's used contests online to really build his business and make a lot of sales. So essentially on Facebook and Pinterest and other social media forums, giving away gear that he gets donated from his suppliers and then he gets 
Facebook likes, people opting into his email list, and then from there, uses email to convert them into customers. So that's... Could you repeat that? That is... Um, you can find out all the details will be posted soon. So the, the website itself for David is tahomountainsports.com. Thank you. So that's what I'd like to put out to the group. My email is corion at gmail.com, or you can find me on corion.com, my website. Please let me know if you have any suggestions for somebody that you've seen. I'm willing to talk to people from anywhere because there's a lot going on with this group and there might be people we can bring in from far afield. Everybody knows somebody. Every, you start tracing how Corian finds people, <laughs> they, he finds them at meetings, but then you also sometimes find a local connection to them because mm -hmm. even if they're Bay Area, somebody here knows them already. Or beyond that. Yes. Remember I was talking about this? Yes. <laughs> well, that's a good time to mention it, talking about everybody knowing each other. <laughs> yeah, you <coughs> go ahead. But I don't want to fight. You want to? I don't want to interrupt your thing. About no, this we already said I could be heckled down. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. The one thing I mentioned, Corian, this isn't a win yet, but it could be. I think to report. Uh, my background is in education, in writing, journalism, uh, public relations, early on, and I know all the schools in this area. Two counties have written grants, and there happens to be an RFQ out from Nevada you know, Joint Union High School District. And I don't know if anybody here is working on it. If they are, um, please let me know. You're way ahead, and there's only like a week or so left, and I'd love to join the team <laughs> and cover the grant part and community outreach. Because um, I've also had uh, nonprofit experience, been a foster parent, know the community groups. But one of the reasons I'm coming to these meetings um, is that my technical skills are way behind. <laughs> And they really need to work on their website and blogs and make their um, school websites easier for parents and students to access. They could be doing so much more. And so um, I'm thinking about the networking part of this group. And I've been coming for about six months now. And I haven't really gotten to know a lot of people and such. But if anybody would like to talk to me about this after the meeting, um, and you know, I think it would be really neat to pull together a local team, a local team of people from this group to, to work on this. So, or if you're already working on it, uh, just let me know because, uh, like I said, I lack that whole technical area that they they need. So, that makes sense? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Mary, Mary Abbott. <laughs> so, I'll be here after the meeting. What is it again? What exactly is it? It's they're looking for somebody to help. Oh, yeah, I didn't even say like the purpose. What they're looking for is for someone to help with public relations and getting. Uh, community connections from the Nevada Joint Union High School District, and they are um, wanting to do that through the web, brochures, all the usual PR things. But I really think they're missing out on all the um, internet work that they could they be doing. They should get some of those um, ninth graders to do it. <laughs> <laughs> they know how. And as a, as a former NU mom, I can say the website is horrible. And that was several years ago. It <laughs> still so, is. It hasn't changed. No. So if any of you have any ninth graders at home. Yeah, <laughs> send them in. So thank you very much, Mary. Now, we um, every month we are lucky enough to have a sponsor who helps us with paying for this space. We had it for free for a long time. Now we pay for it. And our sponsor is right here. Hello there. Oh, but Robert, you have to stand up. This is Robert Geis from oh, you want SCORE. Me to go now? Yeah, I think we'll let you talk a little bit about sure. what you're doing now while, while Corian still sets up, and then you can maybe talk a little bit more at the end. Sure, I only need an hour. Okay, no, you've got about three minutes. Oh. <laughs> I'm Bob, and I'm with SCORE. And uh, for those of you who don't know what SCORE is, we are probably the best kept secret in the United States. We are comprised of about 14,500 volunteers, and of those volunteers, probably 90-95% have owned their own businesses or been in the executive level of corporations. Um, I've been both. And we have uh, about 400 chapters in the U.S., Sacramento being one of the better ones, believe it or not. We just got a number one ranking. Out of 360, that's pretty darn good. Wow. Um, to a person, uh, we will all admit, is probably the most gratifying thing we've ever done is giving back. Because we do not charge. 
for our workshops, webinars, face-to-face, uh, -face. and we have clients that have been with us for 10 years, 5 years, where as long as the client needs us, we're there and uh, for no charge. Um, we're funded by the SBA and Small Business Administration. Mm -hmm. We, um, I like the face-to-face. -face. In fact, I had a client just before coming here, and uh, small business, uh, home-based, one person, and yesterday the same thing. Both are experiencing growth, and the biggest problem is, where do I go from here? Other than being frank, frantic and not sleeping at night and stuff like that. They're faced with uh, employees, which is, scares everybody, uh, anybody that's been there. The interviewing is so tough, and again, we have workshops on all of that. And if anybody has any questions, you know, for me after, um, I can explain everything. How to, you know, go to our website. Our workshops are mostly in Sacramento. We did our first one here at the Board of Realtors, and it was how to start a business. But I would assume everybody in this room is an owner of a business, whether it be home business home-based or brick-and-mortar. It, it really doesn't matter. The next one we'd like to do is uh, actually how to make your business more successful. And working with the Chamber, who's of course on our side, uh, ERC, uh, Sierra Commons, uh, Maid should be in one of them, and Ruth. <laughs> I just used your name, Ruth, I just threw it out there. But <laughs> we do have a lot of support. We would like that have that workshop and of course you're all invited when we have it and it's no charge so thank you very much thank you so um, I'm gonna bring on uh, Corian who probably doesn't need much um, introduction because he's all over the place but he has a website Corian.com he does many 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 things teaching is one I can't even tell you what he does. He's all over the place. <laughs> and he has fun with life. That's what's really cool. So he's going to do this little presentation on LinkedIn. Remember, we can, we can get in deeper. We can broaden it. Whatever the group as a whole starts going for, okay? So, Mr. Corian, you're on. Thanks. All right. So... As our impromptu planning, I'm glad I have this one more or less in the can, and I've updated a little bit scrambling this morning. Uh, I saw that raise that uh, hands raise. I'm going to reverse it. Who here does not have a profile on LinkedIn? You do not have a profile on LinkedIn. You can put your hands up. It's okay. That's fine. So um, those that raise your hand, you've got an idea of what LinkedIn is, right? Yeah? Okay. Let me go through yeah. the basics. Uh, LinkedIn is essentially Facebook for business. It is a very large network, over 200 million members worldwide growing really quickly from a variety of business areas. It's a place where people can prospect for leads, find people that they want to connect with and make business connections online. They can look for jobs or there's a lot of headhunters out there that look for people to hire. I occasionally get messages from people saying, hey, we like your resume, we'd like to have you apply for this particular job. Uh, the basic idea around it is you have a profile page which explains who you are, your business information. For me, it's essentially like having a resume online. Uh, now that I've been an entrepreneur for a long time, I don't keep my resume updated like I used to before when I was really looking for going from job to job. This is still a good place for me to make sure as I'm developing my skill set, as I'm doing different types of work, where I'll put that effort now is into LinkedIn, because I know that if I had to, we've already lost one. We know, I know that if I had to, I could take that information on the profile and put it into a resume if I wanted to go and apply for a more professional job. The key part, uh, again, is your profile explaining who you are, messages going back between different members of LinkedIn, People that are in your network, people you have a direct connection with, you can have as many messages for free back and forth with them as you want. People that are not in your network, 
Sometimes it will restrict you on a free account to say the only way you can message this person is if you happen to know their email address, for example, to show that you actually know the person a little bit more. Overall, um, we'll get into groups in a moment. Uh, LinkedIn profiles, we did that. Uh, it's free for most features. There's a lot of added benefits for doing a paid LinkedIn account. Essentially, they will up your limits, so the number of people that you can reach out to, the number of messages that you can send, the amount that you can do, and there's tiers within that. I'm not going to get into details there because I've tried the paid version. For me, the free version works pretty well. Probably the biggest difference I've noticed is the free <coughs> search version isn't the best. So if you want to go and search for somebody and really break it down by industry type, by position, by name, by location, you can't do that as easily in the free version. And I'll get in and I'll demonstrate some of these in a moment. There's a lot of support around LinkedIn. This is one of the most basics is their support form so that you can go through, read articles, watch videos about how to use LinkedIn. How much is the paid version? We can look at the prices to okay. see what they are. Um, I seem to remember it was like uh, $20 a month, but we can look at that. Can version. we interrupt with basic questions? Or do you want to wait till the end? Like you just did. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Four. Okay. Uh, let's start in the back of the room first. Corian, tell us again what your, I mean, you have your own business. You've been very successful with it. Why do you use it and how does it benefit you? I will answer a lot of those kind of questions with some demonstrations as well as going oh, through okay. the, the presentation. Yeah. So let me get back to you. If I can dodge any more questions, please. Okay. <laughs> You're already back up. <laughs> yeah, babe, go ahead. Uh -huh. Could I, I missed the URL for learn.linkedin. Yes. Oh, there it is. and I, I should mention, this presentation is available. I skipped this slide because you guys know who I am, but I shouldn't have skipped this part. This slide is available online, uh, this slide share, this presentation. So if you go to slideshare.net forward slash Corian, LinkedIn-NCO2013. Could you post that on the uh, groups? Yeah, sure. yeah I'll, I'll post that, and, and we got to change a lot of things about today's listing, so I'll, I'll definitely post that. And as I said, I just uploaded that beforehand, so I haven't tested that yet. I hope it's the right URL. <laughs> I have a question about yeah. something you just said, which was you said the free version of search, like searching for people, is not as good as the paid one. I don't really need to search for people, but I would like employers to search for me. <laughs> so so they do, have a paid I need, version. No. do I need the paid version? No. Everything okay. you need to be out there as an individual with essentially that LinkedIn resume, you can have through the, the free version, for sure. Okay. Yes. okay that I'm getting a lot of requests, and I, I think I'm answering them, but the basic question is, is I have two passwords, and I've communicated twice and not gotten an answer. Am I, what the heck am I doing wrong? In other words, I go in with the proper password, and I say accept and stuff. But if I want to go further, I have another password by accident. Uh, most the times accident is probably my fault. Yeah, but most times with online websites, you're not going to have two passwords. You're going to have one that is the main password. Yeah, and but I can't one get in on the second program. So, I'm not going to be able to demo that one now. Why don't you find me afterwards, and we'll try to do it on my computer. Okay. okay? Uh, all right, so maybe you got that URL. You're good? Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. It's okay. Um, like I'm here with my employer, so I have one particular skill set, and maybe we want to have LinkedIn for that business. But I also have, if I have a business in my own time, is there a way to run multiple profiles? No, but the idea or is how does that work? it is about you as a person. Okay. So whatever your skills are, whatever your past work, uh, employment history, whatever side projects you're working on, they can all be represented on LinkedIn unless you don't want them to be, which is like if... You know, you run a fetish shop somewhere in San Francisco and you don't want your employer to know that. Not that I'm saying you do. <laughs> but that's some place where you have to make some judgment calls there. For the most part, if you have a professional... I get everybody's attention, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it just is your choice. But my recommendation is everything that you have professionally that goes on the LinkedIn network, it's about you. Please include that in your, your list. And it's oftentimes I'll see people who have, like, you know, you have those positions, blah, 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 like 2008 to current. And they'll have like six of those. Because mm -hmm. entrepreneurs so, are on there. So this would acceptable. always be for the person and not for the business. There are company pages for the business as well. Separate section of LinkedIn, and I will get to that if I have a chance. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I should mention um, a couple of important things I use LinkedIn for, and again, I will get into more detail. It's a great place to answer your business questions. There are groups there around every kind of business field, whether it's a matter of marketing or finances or professions, like finding, finding a group of accountants or a group of authors or a group of nonfiction author, authors. There are all these different groups where you can go and find relationships and it's a great place to ask questions about what you need to know in business. For me particularly, I'm very strong in marketing for my business. I tune out with finance. I just don't want to do it. I hire other people to do that. So as I was learning kind of how to set that up, I went to those kind of groups, asked those questions around areas I needed the most help. And Google is paying attention that if you are blogging and if you're doing other search engine optimization, LinkedIn is a place where you can distribute. So just like Twitter, just like Facebook, LinkedIn can be put in that same bucket of essentially easy places where if you have an update that's linking to an update, upcoming blog, that can go on Twitter in one form, it can go on LinkedIn in a little bit more professional form, and it can go on Facebook in a different form. So it's distribution. Um, let's go, uh, this is, this by the way, this presentation was a three hour class at uh, Plaster School for Adults that have condensed quite a bit, so I would be spending time doing hands on when people were at computers. I'm not going to do that here. Everybody here except for a handful and you know who you are, already have accounts. So um, we're not gonna go through that. Let's talk about optimizing profile, and I will go through some examples there. Um, I will mention, if you haven't done this already, it's very easy to import your connections, for example, through email. You can import directly from Gmail. The main things I would warn you about, first of all, LinkedIn wants you to build the LinkedIn network, so it will ask you to send invitations to people who are not on LinkedIn. I'll give you a big list. Hey, do you want to send everybody you know an invitation to go to LinkedIn? Say no. You don't want to spend your social capital by inviting people to your website. But in another section, it will say, here's all the contacts that are already on LinkedIn. There will be a LinkedIn little, their profile picture and a LinkedIn logo next to each one. I would encourage people, invite everyone there. This is professional, it is business. I do not know of anyone that I would have in my email that would be offended by the fact that I was asking them for a LinkedIn connection because they can simply say no. Plus it's a core part of how LinkedIn works that you have this ability to go to your current existing profiles, your email, like Gmail, and suck those in. You can also, through a couple steps, get from your Facebook friends into LinkedIn, and I'll leave that as a teaser because it takes a couple steps, but if you want to talk to me about that, email me. Yes? Is there any way, I, so I did that by mistake once. <laughs> yep. um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, go in and invite everybody on my all my uh, Gmail accounts. And yeah. yeah, there's definitely some people I did not want to be linked in with me. And how, is there any way I can reverse that? Or can I delete? You can, you can remove <laughs> connections. I, yeah, yeah I can, I'm sure I can you can remove connections. Yeah. 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 So you can go to your connections tab, go to manage connections, and they'll have all of your connections. You can search from somebody, and from there, there'll be an option to remove them as a connection. Try it again. Okay. And I haven't done that, um, but I know that it's, it's there, because I'm sure people have done it to me. <laughs> uh, uh, setting up a... You get notified. Huh? If somebody just linked no. to you, you would not get notified. No. So you can't select who you want from your email? You absolutely you can't. No. You can absolutely have a checklist okay. that will provide you, but by default it will select everyone. Right. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to go through that and unselect some. Your call there. But you can't. Again, the downside of building your network on LinkedIn, there's not much of a downside. So if those people don't want to be connected with you, they'll just simply say no. So it's not really you know, infringing on their LinkedIn account to get a connection from somebody they've had a past connection with, whether it's through email or whatever it might be. Okay, set up company page for any business. You can attach a company page from your LinkedIn free account to a free company page and add other people within your company as administrators. So that it's a good way to separate your personal life and where you might have multiple business interests to a company that then shows, by, for the free account, can show one product or service that your company provides. And that's a way that you can, again, bring people in to that network, build the network, and then say, oh, by the way, here's what's happening with my company. Here's updates for my blog. Here are things that I'm doing. And here is a place where you can endorse my company or endorse the services that we provide. 
Oh, Corey, yeah. speaking of that, I often get these messages that says, I've endorsed you. Yeah. And I go, now what the heck do I do? Yeah, let's, this is perfect. Perfect. Let's, let's talk about this a little bit. So, I don't know. It's delayed usually because I don't have time. But. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll explain exactly what's going on there. First of all, LinkedIn, we mentioned like a resume. Uh, I want you to notice one thing that I, I went to a LinkedIn presentation at Sacramento Speakers Network uh, about a month ago now. And I've learned that this, see this headline where I said the accessible expert at Corian.com? That's my fancy way of saying CEO at Block Company. I found out that one of the main recommendations was updating that headline to sell yourself. It's available up to 120 characters and it does not have to do with your position. It can simply be why somebody should engage with you. So I want you to notice the difference since I took that class and I didn't have time to update it in the PowerPoint. Let's go ahead and close this. This is the way that people would view my profile on LinkedIn. And now I've changed it to get right under that 120 characters to say win the Google popularity contest with great content. I'll help you save time and make more money online. It is a benefit statement to the people who might engage me saying, I will do this for you. I can help you here. This is what I will do for my market. Now, this is on your personal profile, not... This is my personal profile. Okay. Overall, here are the basics. Your profile picture, especially after taking this last class, is crucial. It is the main thing that people see. A profile picture by default, like best practices, should be your head filling up most of the frame. I often get connections with people that will be like sitting by a fancy car, or it'll be them at a picnic. It's not a way to sell yourself through LinkedIn. <coughs> also making sure, and we'll go back to the PowerPoint for this for these. Include your, all your past job and education history. It has sections for, it goes pretty detailed now, that you can not only say where you got your, your degree or where you studied, but exactly what you studied. And you can list out very, as specific as you want to. At least go through, like it's a resume, and make sure that your basics are included there. Are you focused? Is this is blurry back here? <laughs> so turn off lights? Um, yeah, we can turn off lights, but... Uh, no, it's... Ask the person next to you. Is that blurry for you? Is that blurry? Well, it is, but I think it's just the screen. I mean, yeah, the screen it's is fine. Okay. We'll move up, but you can read it, right? Yeah. yeah. It looks pretty sharp from here. Okay. So I'm going to move on. I'm not going to mess with folks. There's many seats here. Yes. Feel free to move up. Thank you. Okay. Uh, fill out your profile completely. One of the things, especially as you're starting out, it'll have a percentage of how much of your profile you've filled out. Challenge yourself to get that as filled out as you can. Again, think about it from the point of view of the person who might want to engage with you in business. Somebody who's a joint venture partner or somebody who's looking to hire you. The more you have there, the more likely that they're going to contact you and perhaps that relationship can grow. Use keywords in your descriptions and what you do. Your result, your profile, comes up in search results. So one of the things that you can do is see how people find you. I often get found when people are searching for search engine optimization or search marketing or Google marketing, things that are in my expertise area. So think about it from the point of view, again, of who are the people that you're looking to attract, what are the skills that you have that they may be looking for. Include that in your description. Include that in who you are. And we talk about recommendations and endorsements. Now let's take a moment to talk about those. <coughs> endorsements are a way that LinkedIn, starting about six months ago, maybe a little bit longer, is working to show people's, oops, people's skill sets at a glance. And you may have noticed that sometimes when you go to visit somebody's profile, a box will pop up at the top of the screen that says, would you like to endorse David Franks for internet marketing, social media marketing, mm -hmm. whatever it might be, and you can, it's really easy. Mm -hmm. Which, by the, by the way, makes it not worth that much as far as social capital, because it's very easy to do. So when you get an endorsement, you'll oftentimes, oops, get a, come on down, oops, better go past it. Uh, no, other way. There we go. I just wanted to go up to the top here and show that you'll get notifications for people that have endorsed you. What should you do if somebody endorses you? Endorse thank them. Thank you. No. Endorse them. Say thank you. First of all, is this somebody you like that's actually doing it because they've worked with you for reals? 
Okay, maybe you want to endorse them back if you have got something good to endorse them for. If there's somebody that's simply working to build their endorsements by endorsing everybody they know, maybe you don't. Overall, I rarely, just because I'm very busy, rarely spend the time for people endorsing me to go back and endorse them, unless it's somebody I go, oh, I know that person, I've worked with them, I really know their skill set, there's something there that I want to endorse. So overall, endorsements are very, very easy, but the nice thing is once you've built them up over time, get off of the screen, <clears throat> when I look at somebody, I will quickly go down to their endorsements, because if they have hardly any, how good are they really? And I had somebody who wanted me to speak in an event, and I went, first thing I did is I looked at his LinkedIn profile, and I saw that he had under 100 connections. Let's go up and explain what that is. <clears throat> the top of your page, one of the first things I always look at is this right here, number of connections. So I saw he had less than 100 connections, and he didn't have, he had like five endorsements. This guy's an event promoter. If he isn't spending time <laughs> on LinkedIn to at least get some endorsements, I don't want to speak for his event in Yuba City. So that's how I made the decision, was through LinkedIn saying, hey, you can say everything you want, but if you don't even have the basics of having people endorse you, then there may not be anything there. Now, recommendations are more important and harder to get. Recommendations, yes. On endorsements, what if somebody's endorsing you for things that you don't even do? <laughs> you can choose not to show them on your profile. I've taken you them off my profile yeah. because they, they, they endorse me for a good interviewer or a good... Wow. Yeah. Jim, you have problems most of us don't have. <laughs> I'm too popular. Can somebody do something about this, please? <laughs> um, <laughs> You have the choice of what endorsements you want to show in your profile. So you can take out ones that you don't think are appropriate. There are many, that's why you know in general they're going to be sorted by the ones you have the most endorsements for. But if there are things that filter in there, just take them out. Recommendations are much more important. So let me scroll down a bit here. So this is to my recommendation section saying here is my job. I'm the accessible expert at Corian.com Internet Marketing. This is where people have written a bit about me and said why they want to work with me. I have, I should show the number of recommendations that I have. There's a bunch on there and then there's, it just keeps going. When I work with a client that I have a good relationship with, it's not unusual after we've gotten to a stopping point or you know, a place that they've seen my work, I will send them a LinkedIn message saying I enjoyed working with you, I hope you enjoyed working with me, would you be willing to recommend me? And if I'm feeling type A that day, I might say something like, here are some of the other things that people had to say, or you can go to my LinkedIn recommendations and read what people said. Because remember, just like I remember this in college, when I was asking for uh, a letter from recommendations from a professor, I wrote those letters. Because no professor's got the time to write anything really insightful, and so they, great, this person's going to ask me for a letter of recommendation, read it over, yeah, that's pretty much what they did. And so I get a good recommendation there. I don't do that for LinkedIn, but I will coax people, saying, here are some of the things other people have had to say, or please go through and read recommendations. Mm -hmm. When somebody recommends you, that's a place where you might want to think more about whether you want to recommend them back. In general, I work to keep my ratio for lots of people recommending me and a handful of people that I recommend, because I'm very selective about that. That's your choice. But once you've built this up, this is such a great place to both collect testimonials, because these then might get put into snippets on my website, because some of these are really good, as well as a simple way that somebody can vet me and say, okay, it's not just me talking about me, I've got a lot of my people in my community saying, this is somebody you might want to do business with. Set your uh, uh, public profile to show everything. That's a common mistake I'll see among people who will put all this work into their LinkedIn profile, but you don't get to see everything unless you're connected with them. So LinkedIn's really powerful. If I go and do a Google search for myself, which I love doing, by the way. Did you know you love doing it, too? <laughs> <laughs> Except I can't get it right. <laughs> I didn't expect that, but there you go. The number one result when somebody Googles my name is LinkedIn. Now, if they're not connected with me, 
they're not going to necessarily see all that work I put into my profile unless I set it as public for everyone. Okay? So, In addition, oh, yeah. Torian, Google won't see all that information to index if it's not public. Great. Thank you, Matt. Sure. I have a question. Why would LinkedIn come in above your regular websites? Because LinkedIn's got more page rank, more link juice. Okay. So, you guys remember that from SEO? It's a popularity contest. It is the number of incoming links, the number of, amount of social activity that goes to a website that makes it strong in the Google search results. So, the funny thing is, if you just did a search for Corian a while ago, you'd get some of Facebook, you'd get LinkedIn, but Corian.com, until I developed it, came up 9 or 10. But now that I've put the SEO side of that, I got LinkedIn on top, I've got my personal website next. Okay. Sorry, I had to miss the first few minutes. Where on LinkedIn are those preferences to change? Um, within settings. Okay. Uh, under, oh, that's actually advanced search. Hold on. So, <coughs> settings under oh, your okay. name at the top. Okay. Very good. Thank and then from there, there's, I'm not going to go through settings. <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. Just, <laughs> okay. It's all changed. Uh, <coughs> One of the things that was really impressed upon me seeing this LinkedIn expert, Kurt Shaver, speak about a month ago, and I'm, by the way, completely unapologetic for being derivative of other people in the field, so he taught me a lot. Uh, one of the key things I really saw was using your social network to help build your connections in the right way. Uh, first of all, you can build your, your existing connections into LinkedIn, as I mentioned, you can import contacts from link, uh, LinkedIn, excuse me, from email. Uh, don't invite non-users to join, as I mentioned. Connect with people you meet at business and events. So that's a really common habit that I do now. So I was at a speaking event with Jim uh, two weeks ago, and when I collected those business cards, one of the first things I did was, instead of emailing people or whatever else, I just simply went and searched for them on LinkedIn, sent them a LinkedIn connection. It's really easy to do, and it's not that big of a deal. <clears throat> so then if I want to get the conversation going, when they, if they accept back with me, but if, when they do, I will send them a message in LinkedIn saying, thanks for the connection. I'm looking forward to learning a little bit more about your business. I see some opportunities for us to work together. Do you have time that you might have for a brief phone call next week? It's not a biggie, and a lot of times that will lead to a conversation with somebody you want to talk to. Uh, LinkedIn groups, let me talk about that just briefly. You guys ready to heckle me down? You're doing okay? So far, so good. Okay. Corinne, well, you came in late, but it was, we don't have the regular speakers. The reason I'm here today, I have car troubles. Oh, I'm wondering if you're, um, if you're concerned at all about your personal security, putting all that on. I there. carry mace, no. <laughs> no, no. I mean, the idea is LinkedIn's very professional, so there's very little, th very few things I'm sharing on there that I'm not willing. That, like, for example, aren't on my business website. So my phone number is going to be on there. My contact information. What would your concern be? Well, your whole um, resume of everything you've ever done. What I understand is on there. Yeah. Like <clears throat> what would you? What's your worst fear? What could somebody do to mess with you if they knew where you worked previously? No, but you have your whole history out there. A lot of people don't want to do that. Yeah, but that's true. You don't have to. But I'm wondering, like, what's the bad downside? What could somebody do if they knew where you'd worked? Could they maybe call your past, you past employer and say, you're good. You made the right decision to fire that guy. <laughs> I don't see much downside to it. Um, let me talk about groups a little bit. I am a member of many different groups that have a variety of specialties. Let's pick one, like digital marketing. One of the approaches I teach to businesses is to project their expertise online. Google, uh, excuse me, LinkedIn groups are an excellent place you can do that. Specifically, you can do a search for a group that's in your target market, and let me walk you through a couple basic steps to evaluate whether a group is one that you want to be a member of. The first thing I will do is I will scroll down the right-hand side until I see this box. Group statistics. I'm curious, how many people here have looked at group statistics for a LinkedIn group? Ah! <laughs> okay, we're, we're off of that demonstration for a while. Ah, we had this happen a couple there. weeks ago. Yeah. It's over here. Huh? It's no, no, it's, it's plugged in. It's just the heater. It burns out. Overheat it. It's too hot. It's so hot, Corian. Maybe it's time to switch gears and 
We got 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to pose a question. What does LinkedIn have to do with branding? To bring us back to what we were going to be talking about earlier today. Mm -hmm. So the first question is, what is branding? I'd like to hear some, some shout-outs from the crowd. What do you consider when you hear the word branding? What do you, what do you think? <laughs> Differentiating yourself from other people that might provide the same product, you are an individual brand of, say, service or product. And, and don't necessarily limit your thinking here to you as a personal brand. Think about company branding, branding in general. Um, yeah, that basically, um, let's say, like with a product like, let's say, Pepsi or Coca Cola, mm -hmm. it's, it's basically the identity. So, like, if you see a logo or a just a whole image that represents that particular company and, and it no, you know, in, in the image, most successful an image representing a company, right? Like the Apple okay. logo. I mean, yep. you immediately logo. have, uh, you know, a very strong um, association. Let me get that. some. Let me get some more. Make them a little bit shorter if you don't mind, because I want to. I want to get some brainstorming. I kind of think of it as the essence of what I think about somebody. Like, if I think your branding, it's SEO, it's, you know, website. Bring it from here up to here. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Being known. Being known. Being known and being known for what you are. Yeah, I think it ties in also the experience of the company and the mission of the company, just the overall thing that's captured in a brand. That's great. the idea. Anyway. Yes. The personality of the brand. That's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for me, personality and a lot of these things go with consistency, Reputation. which is an important yeah. part of branding. So all of those things are right. And that's, I guess, the main thing that I wanted to get across is branding is many different things. The core aspects that I think of usually are a feeling and a way of thinking about a company that's associated in their branding. So if I think of Nike, I think of a company that does outdoor gear. So their branding is brilliant because it's three words you can remember, just do it. It's action packed, it's very short. But then the branding of that company goes beyond that little motto to the symbol. So now you can just see the swoosh and know exactly this feeling. So for companies, it is a matter of showing what you do well, what differentiates you, and having a consistent thread to what you do in business. It's his brand manager saying, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so think about that for yourself personally, that branding is both internal, what you do thinking about your own business and how you run that. It can be internal within a company. So there's a lot of companies like Apple that are very well known for having a strong brand that they project internally to their employees as much as they project outside to the world. So what you are taking then from LinkedIn is developing that personal brand where you decide the things that are your strengths, the things that are most important for you and your market, the people who might hire you, and making sure that that's consistent. So for example, if you have your business cards with a different logo than your website that has something slightly different than what you have on LinkedIn, that's inconsistent branding. It becomes very difficult to say, I've got a clear, simple image of what this company is about. And one of the exercises, I won't do this now, but if I just started putting out brand names out there, you would immediately start getting some images in your head. It could be from their advertising campaigns, it could be from their logos. It's the same idea when you're in a community, whether it's online or offline, talking about individuals, there's going to be that image, that feeling of what they do well. I want to make one comment about branding too, and it's really important to the people who are thinking about starting a business or they're involved in working on their branding, and that is one of the things that helps you create who your brand is or who you are, is a good, strong mission statement. Mm -hmm. I think without that, you have to really start there to identify your differentiators, who you are, and from a good, strong mission statement, you've got a great, great map for branding from that point forward, and you'll, and you'll be more consistent. That's a great point, and it's something that you can definitely take away as a little as homework assignment. How many of you have a mission statement, an actual, factual, written-down mission statement for your business? Okay, that's higher than most groups, I would imagine. So if you didn't raise your hand there, consider working on that. I know that for Batteries for Less, I went through an exercise of branding ourselves, changing our logo, and we got really deep into, wow, we're, we are having the tech day of all tech days. I called her. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to have PowerPoint back on. Uh, overall, think about those aspects of why you're in business, what's your passion, 
And I know that a lot of people come to find and do business with me because I'm passionate about it. And that's something that really is attractive when you look to, to find somebody and say, okay, do they really care about what they're doing? Are they working to improve what they're... Well, that's not the way it's supposed to project. One. It gets there. Hey! <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's going to be hot. <laughs> and we will be going back to discussion as soon as the ball burns out again. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make a comment about branding because I just went through a rebranding or actually officially branding myself um, just in the last few months. And one of the things I found to be really important, a lot of times online we're told to niche and get really specific with who we're trying to attract. But when you're branding, you really want to consider the umbrella that there's room to grow in, you know, kind of the essence of who you are, so that even if you choose a niche, you can still switch around and move your tribe along with you because you can expand and try on other things, you know, so you have to look ahead at who you yep. really are and what you're really about so you have that room. That's a great point. Um, for me personally, the way I've done that is for me, search engine optimization mm -hmm. is what people know me for. It's way too narrow. Mm -hmm. I do so much more website design, all these yeah. other aspects. Mm -hmm. So as we launched Corian.com, the reason the company's name, Corian.com Internet Marketing, is for that brain mm -hmm. expansion point of view. Great point. Yeah. Um, how, how do you wind up in a group? Do you select a You're bringing it back to groups. That's perfect. Let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've got several plants in the crowd. Statistics. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, she wants to know uh, why you might be in a group or how you'd find a group. And I will demonstrate both of those right now. Let's actually, let's do this with your example. What is an area of uh, interest that you have, something related to your business? A business group. Cookbook writer. Cookbook writer. Yeah, right. So let's she see. Cooks so beautifully. I'm going to look for, uh, okay, so I'm now searching, by the way. Do you notice there's this menu here, which now says groups? You could change that menu to be inbox, which would say search your messages or people. I'm just looking in groups right now. So I find there's the Chef Network. That sounds interesting. How about this? Chef, 16,000 members. Let's take a look at them. Whenever I look at a group, I'm going to go back to that step I was about to demonstrate. I look to see not only how many people are in the group, what kind of people, how active is it? Is this where my audience is? So scrolling down on the right-hand side, you will see this box. This shows you insights and statistics about a group. So this group has 16,000 members. First thing I'll notice, comments last week, 49. That means it's active. People are actually commenting on things that people are putting there. Even with that many people, 49 is That is different. very good. That's okay. quite good. Really? Now, I want you to notice, yeah, because there are many other, the thing that I'll look at, that's comments, really? not posts, and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Posts are when anybody that's in the group can post a new thread, a new message to that group board. Comments are when people are actually interacting with that. So seeing that there's quite a few comments for me is telling, because there's many groups where there's lots of posts, everybody's self-promotional, let me post something about what I'm doing. And it's just, you know, spitting into a weapon. There's not much going on there, there's not much interaction. Mm -hmm. So I will look at this tab for activity as one of my first stops. Discussions are equivalent to those posts. Comments are the number of times people are commenting on that. This shows you a trend over time that discussions Something are green, comments are blue. <laughs> well, the group for a while there must have gotten a little bit overly promotional because look at all the discussions and the comments didn't really increase, but overall, they're in balance. So I'm seeing this is a growing group and people are actually using it. Next, I will look at the demographics of the group. Again, looking at this from a marketing point of view, is my market on this group? So I can see, okay, this is kind of good. There's a lot of people that consider themselves senior managers or senior people in the company, managers, owners. This might be the exact kind of group you talk to, opposed to if you saw many people that were entry level or beginning positions. Yes? The comments and, and entries, are those members only or are they public? People just Any member, member of the group. Any member of the group, okay. You must be a member of the group to post or comment and some groups will be closed, some groups will be open so that anybody can read them, okay. but to interact with them you need to be a member. Furthermore, I could look at the function and I see, okay, 
I'm, this is what I was hoping to see. This is a group of chefs and cooks that are actually doing it. They're in operations. They're not entrepreneurs or consulting. These are people that I want to talk to to say, hey, I've got cookbooks that might be of interest to you. Now, I've decided this is a pretty good group. The next thing I will do is I will go back to the main page. And at the top, I can click on Join Group. Some groups will allow you to join with no check. You just are a member. Other groups will tell you that you need to be approved before you're allowed to start activity. Previous discussions, okay. Now, we'll see if the message goes through. It looks like this is open. Welcome to Chef Foods Group. I am now a member. That's all it took. <laughs> Boom, I'm a member. Uh, now, let me, let me give you a couple insights about what I like to do as one of the ways to start getting involved in a group. For me, the concerns I have. What is the conversation? What are people talking about? Who are the influencers? The people that when they post, people listen, tend to have more quality content, tend to be influencing people. I want them to be my friends. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things that I will do is I will go to the, well there's top, well, I should mention this, there's top influencers, but you can game this system. There's things that you can do. Uh, I know an associate of mine did a brilliant thing. He put a contest out to his niche group. He's working with a specific white collar field. And he said, I'm running a contest. The way you enter this contest is by commenting on this LinkedIn post. And then I will send you a private message with the URL you go to. So that he became the top influencer simply by having people entering this contest. And that in turn got him a little bit more business. But what I want to show you is it will tell you who are the group Leaders, let's go ahead and go under more. Group profile. I'll wait to this load. What I'm looking for is every group has got <coughs> an organizer. If you look over here, Barack is the organizer. If there were co-organizers, they would also be listed here. Here's my trick for you. I will send a message to Barack. Something along the line saying, hey, I do blah blah blah. I just joined your group. I'm really looking forward to learning more about it. I had a couple questions for you. We have time for a quick phone call. Or, better yet, ask him a question like, what are the topics that people tend to be most passionate about in this group? As far as I'm concerned, his responsibility as the owner of that group is answering questions just like that. Right? He's the facilitator. People want to know what's being discussed and how. And I find that I get a response rate very, at a very high rate. So because I've got a free version of LinkedIn, usually my technique will be something like this. I will go to the individual and look at their profile. 500 plus connections, he looks like a handsome guy. Let's go ahead and connect with him. <laughs> Here is another trick that I recommend. Anytime that you send a connection request, always include an introductory sentence for why you're connecting to that person and why it might be worth that time, person's time to connect with you. Among other things, when this guy eventually says yes to the connection, which could be six months down the road, I can search my inbox for his name and see what I put into that message and say, oh, you're the facilitator of this group. That's why I contacted you, great. I now can pick up where I left off and say, okay, this is a great group. Can you tell me more about how I should interact? So I will put here, I am a former resort chef, and I'm interested. So how many in people put? Are you really a former resort chef? I happen to be. Okay. Yes. <laughs> if you can find common ground, go for the common ground. Uh, it's on my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> Uh, well, in learning cooking so about <laughs> the topics people, oops, Most passionate. people discuss in the, I'm, I don't remember the name of it, so I'm going to just, Here, Chef, Chef Webs. Webs. Group. Webs. What was it? Webs. That's fine. That's No, that's their, their you have a typo uh, for internet. You? We're learning website. your about. Thank you. <laughs> I was talking and typing at the same time. Look, Rachel, you didn't have to catch my typo. 
Still there. Pick your. Your group and the topics. There we go. Thank you. It takes a little time. And the topics people discuss. <laughs> I will. I will just take that out because he may be a me uh, facilitator of multiple groups, but that's fine. The chef I put in there, by the way, was more of a message to myself about what group that person's there. So I will say, send invitation. Now, Corey, and you might also let people know that you can go into your. Um, into your things, what do they call it? And you can say, I don't want mail every day from this group. I want it once a month, once a week. It's totally important. And I do all of my messages from groups as a group digest. So I get an email of what's going on in the group, but I do as a digest so that everything's condensed into one message. Unless you love another a ton of email. Yes. Okay. So basics there. You can search for your market. You can find a group, you can evaluate whether that group has got activity and looks like it's worthy of, of joining. Send messages to the group owners. From there, I'm almost always with social media if it's somebody I re really want to start working with, working toward a quick phone call. Because that's where I can spend a little bit of time filling the person out and find out that they're really enthusiastic for helping people out. And I'll introduce you to Joe, Sam, and, and Craig, and they're all, and Sally, and they're all members of the group, and they'll love what you have. It can depend. Yes? I'm wondering about the search um, capacity. So if we want to search and find how many people are that do this in this region, we get a list of people. We can't actually contact them directly as a, as that list, right? We have to go one at a time. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. Individual messages. There are companies that allow you to do mailing through LinkedIn. I've been contacted by those messages before. Somebody basically saying, okay, I want to identify people within this sector. So you can do that through a company. I don't know the details. I've never done it directly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what that means is I could essentially send bulk email through LinkedIn, through one of these LinkedIn partners to say, I want everybody who is a chef that has, mm -hmm. you know, between this level of amount of job experience or within this specific location. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we did LinkedIn yeah. groups. Thank connections with a brief message. Uh, that's also another thing that if there's somebody that sends me a connection request, I'll oftentimes send them just a brief message saying thanks for the connection. Uh, and this is in the presentation, as I said, LinkedIn groups can be set up by any member. It's, you can find groups, you can also set up your own groups. This is what we went through, looking through statistics. And contact group owner nicely. Act about, act about group uh, and usage. So it's exactly what we did there. It's something that you can do pretty easily to develop those relationships. And I will pause there to say, LinkedIn's about business. So that I have got people now that I've developed relationships in this exact way who now send me leads. They say, oh, like I like business consultants that are in different areas because they get to business that needs internet marketing. Then they go, oh, what's that guy who I had that great phone call with? Just And I connected with him. So I have a few people now that I've developed a relationship with that are actually getting me clients. So it's not just a social game, but it can be. Uh, I'm not going to spend the time because we're running short on time. Go back to this slide. Again, it's published online to set up your company page and then specifically request recommendations for your products or services from people who are allies or friends who are willing to say, I hired Corian.com Internet Marketing to do this, and here was my experience. Positive. So the company page is different than your personal It is. So a company page is for your business. By the way, if, you have, if you're in business, you should be incorporated or have a business entity. You shouldn't be, in my opinion, sole providers. There's lots of tax reasons and other reasons I won't go into. But that said, even if you're not, I am Corian Red. I have a profile on LinkedIn. If I didn't have my companies, I would probably have a company page for Corian Red Professional Speaker because it's a career I'm working to develop. Essentially, it's the same thing that might be on my company page. So just be aware, if you're an individual in business, you can also have a company page for you being an individual in business. You don't have to be a separate business name or a corporation or something like that. Yes? Realistically, when you're on Facebook and you have a Facebook page and LinkedIn and a link book, you know, and Google Plus and all of this stuff, I mean, how much time do you spend on this? Uh, where is the most bang for your buck? Uh, as a distribution platform, that's the place where you can spend the least amount of time, which is simply saying, I'm a content producer and I'm putting out updates on Facebook. 
it's easy to also do a Facebook or LinkedIn update. A right, tweet, well, I use, for example, Hootsuite, so, yes. you know, to get them all. There you go. Right. So that's a way, from that point of view, that's fine. If you're looking for prospect, you need new leads. I would play around with it and see what happens. I have been on LinkedIn for a while and I wasn't actively using it. I was using the section that's now defunct called LinkedIn Answers to ask questions, answer mm -hmm. questions. But that said, once I started developing those relationships and I actually gotten leads from it, I said, huh, ah, maybe this is something I should do more. So my advice to you is spend some time playing around with it, work to find where your tribe is on LinkedIn, see what happens when you start making those connections. In general, I advise people, if you're involved in social media, 10 hours a week to start. 10 to 15 hours, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or your blog, whatnot. And I know I've got the same feeling as well, going, ah, where can I carve out 10 hours? It's business driven and it is something that you can develop those systems over time, develop those relationships, use it primarily for distribution down the road. You don't have to work it as much. Okay. Yes? Can you set up more than one company page? For the free account, no. I would imagine for the paid account, yes, but I'm not positive. Corian, what is, what is a tribe? Good question. I picked that up from doing uh, Barry Friedman's class. I took an eight-week class with him. And a lot of the gurus out there talk about when you're in business, you want people to know you, trust you, and do business with you. And you're going to work to develop your marketing around that market, that niche, that really identifies with you. So one of the, just the mindsets you can put out to yourself is saying, maybe, for example, for you, you're looking for people, you're a relationship counselor, yeah. right? So you're looking for people that are looking for self-improvement, people that are looking into their relationships, actually want to put in that work. That's your tribe. You're not necessarily looking for people who either have been single and are always going to stay single, or people that don't want to put the time into their relationship, whatever it might be, or are perfectly blissful and they don't want to necessarily take that next step to being more blissful. So think about it from a marketing point of view, your niche. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Company page we covered, there's references at the end of the presentation. I think that takes us up to 12, 13. Uh, I'll just say that these are all worth, if you want to spend more time learning about LinkedIn and how it can work for your business, these are all good articles. Particularly this HubSpot is not just one page. It is many, many articles, lots of information about this. There's videos, a lot of people's personal experiences, hands-on demonstrations, etc. We're going till, till 12.30, so why don't we do a couple more questions and then we will, are we doing a, a Rappel sponsorship? Well, we can. We came up with a solution. You did? Okay, then let's get back to that in a couple minutes. Any other questions? Yes. Okay, in your, in your own professional experience with the wide variety of things that you do, uh, what percentage of your growth or value comes from your LinkedIn efforts? Um, little. Yeah, so I get most of my recommendations from people in this local Grass Valley community. That said, I'm more ambitious than that. So as I go beyond this little community, it will become more and more important. One of the things that I'm planning to give myself as an assignment, it's not on Asana yet, uh, or task management software. One of the things that I will, um, I've got on my mind is to do a search for event planners within San Francisco and Sacramento. And then one of the techniques that was recommended by this other teacher was once you find somebody, it'll show you what your shared con who your shared connections are. I've never done this before, but I'm planning to go to a shared connection saying, hey, do you know Joe Blow event manager? I know that you do. Would you be willing to do an introduction to introduce that person to me? It's part of LinkedIn to say get introduced. And that's a place where I want to get myself out there as a speaker to more event promoters, and that's where LinkedIn will definitely come in. Because I've put in all the homework to this point to have a good profile and good connection, it will definitely benefit from it. Is that your main direction? And that's to enhance your speaking fees and your... your <laughs> what speaking fees? <laughs> well, I'm just asking. So that's to enhance Benjamin. you in what way? Yeah. yeah, yeah. so one of my career goals is that I'm working to build my consulting business, mm -hmm. but I like doing this, even on short notice. So I'm looking for more opportunities to do more speaking, and that's where that part of my career both will get me out there to the right kind of business communities, who in turn will come and say, hey, I just saw you speak. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about what you do. Right. Just like everybody here will do today. <laughs>
<laughs> yes. Um, just you know, sort of to summarize all of this, if there were the top three things that you were to pay attention on moving forward with LinkedIn that you would you know, recommend to people. What would those be? Developing your expertise within the business, particularly by utilizing groups to ask questions and fill in your knowledge base. <coughs> Two, doing the basics to have your profile and build your connections. So you just get to a certain point where your profile is fully completed. If somebody wants to check you out and they Google you, they're likely to find LinkedIn. They can say, oh, you've got recommendations, you've got a lot of connections, you're somebody who I consider taking that next step with. And three, depending on the model of your business, either prospecting for leads or finding employment. So those are the main things people use LinkedIn for, are either if I'm looking to get hired, I will go and try to find out who might be looking to hire and making sure I'm set up to be at the right place for that and develop those relationships. For me as a consultant, I'm looking to find either event managers or another one of my targets is web design companies. So if I can find web design companies that are represented on LinkedIn and go to them and say, hey, let's talk because I can add services to what you're providing. You should hire me for providing services to your existing clients. Yes. Thanks. On the endorsements, um so a lot of people are endorsing, endorsing me from what I used to do. It's still part of who I am, but I don't really want more and more endorsements showing me as a nutrition person. How do you, can, is there a way of changing that? Can I just... If you build up the endorsements for your primary areas, when somebody goes to your profile, those primaries will tend to be shown and the suggestions right. more than other ones. Right. So simply by planting the, the field, as it were, of, of working to get some more endorsements for your primary ones, that should tip the balance in favor of that being the, the way that LinkedIn uh, okay. uh, recommends it. Okay, uh, two more questions, and then we'll do sponsorship. And if we have no questions, no more questions. Are there any more LinkedIn questions? Yes. <laughs> How does LinkedIn compare with other social media type? things for building your business? It depends on your business. Well, your business? Uh, very favorably. So Facebook is a place where I've built a certain number of likes, for example, on my business page. And that, okay, shows that there's a little bit of popularity there. I'll tend to connect it more into the ongoing updates, things like that. Okay. LinkedIn is very nice for that kind of professional vetting. Yeah. So if somebody goes and looks at my Facebook page, ooh, it's another Facebook page. If they look at my LinkedIn profile, they say, oh, this is exactly what this person says they do, and here's their experience, here are their recommendations. So as a consultant, it's very, very valuable. So it's probably your number one place. <laughs> um, it's, it's hard to separate that. Because honestly, getting business from social media, very, very hard. But at the same time, it's one of those other factors. So if I go to a trade show and I give somebody my business card, and then they go to research me, and they see yeah. all those various points where I'm online, my website, Facebook, LinkedIn, if they are all done professionally or with intent toward marketing, you're going to have better response and more people actually calling you. Which, so Will, you actually checked out something when you were looking into me too, didn't you? I, I checked out what? You, you said that you, uh, Will called me and said, ah, maybe hire you for something, and... You uh, asked me a question basically saying, who's recommending you? Who's, who's supporting you? And I said, go to my LinkedIn page because that's a place where you'll see other people's opinion about what I'm about. Yes? Well, which circles back what you just said to the branding message, which is in order for you to be consistent in your branding out there in the marketplace, you have to have a LinkedIn presence that gives you the credibility. If you're running a um, family... Uh, health practice of some kind, you may or may not even choose to be there. So it's better to not be there at all than to do a bad job relative to your branding. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So those are the questions. Let's go ahead and do a raffle. Let's make sure everybody who chooses has their card in here. People came in late. Anybody else need to get their card in? And maybe I should tell Corey on what we're doing. <laughs> well, because we didn't have somebody, I thought, well, I could just do this. Okay, so since, since things got kind of cattywampus, 
and we really didn't have um, a speaker here who was going to do a giveaway. Um, I will give away one hour of business or life consultation. And so this is what it looks like. And it just you can get clarity and perspective. And it's a pretty simple process. I take you through some steps and get you to focus on your intention because intention drives everything in business. Okay. With that. Drum roll. Drum roll. And the lucky. It's me. <laughs> 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 Nobody needs to rush out. Uh, next month, the meeting is on, I'm thinking the 28th, but it's fourth Tuesday of the month, 11 a.m. We've June got David Pollaby, he's presented here before in affiliate June marketing, and was very popular. He's a really good speaker. He's got the know-how experience of how this stuff can actually work. Again, doing contests and social media. I will get the Facebook group updated, or the meetup group updated soon. Yes, Bob. Just want to remind everybody, we do have a great um, place for on Facebook where we can talk about and talk about things and post pictures. So Nevada County Online Business Group, it's a Facebook group. Please join in. Um, Corian's pretty active there, and uh, our website in Nevada County Online. So if you haven't been there yet, check it out. We've got a member member resource page. So anybody that has an online service that they want to be listed on the website, let me know. I'll put your name on there. Is the website different than the meetup page? Yes, it is. Yes. We have Turn our own website. website. We have the meetup page. It talks about all the meetings and get you invited and all that. And then we have our actual um, uh, website, which you can get videos that Cheryl puts up mm -hmm. of past meetings. You can also access slideshows uh, slide through the, another page. And then also our member resources and a little bit about who we are. And the member That's resources. That's NevadaCountyOnline.com. If you've not looked at the member resources and all of a sudden you think, gosh, I need a graphic designer. You can go on there and you can read everybody's profile and you can see who matches with you. And it's, it's an incredible resource and I encourage you to use it. And Bob, you had something to say. Oh, I just wanted to see you after. Oh, well, that's what he wants to say. I just wanted to thank Corian for picking up the ball so quickly and yeah. putting on yeah. a great yeah.